must say thank you to the CPA once again for inviting me to be here to exhibit my work, my West Coast premiere, and to talk to you. This is great. I really appreciate your interest. In this talk, I want to share the combinations of me methods I've used to create Illumitones and several other bo bodies of work. And I call this process cameraless photo collage. There are two parts to that term, cameraless and photo collage, and both are necessary to the creation of my finished images, and my, the evolution of my use of them has been intertwined, but I'd like to explain them individually. I'll explain the processes, how I use them, and then I'll show how cameraless imagery and photo collage are part of the history of photography. And I know this is, you've seen some of these already, but I'll show you a few Illumitones to begin with for those of you who just came in so you'll have a reference point. And if you were at the previous talk, thank you very much for staying. And I will repeat a few images and a few ideas, but there'll be a lot of new information as well. Let's start with cameraless images. I've been making images with cameras for nearly 40 years, lots of different camera formats and films. It was through my first explorations with the rangefinder camera that my father gave me that I discovered photography is really a compelling means of expression. However, about 14 years ago, I started working with a new process, a new way of making images that's based on using a flatbed scanner as a recording device rather than a camera and lens. This is the same type of scanner that you might have in your offices that you scan documents, printed pages with. But I use mine to record 3D objects. Here you can see this is a dried leaf on the center of the scanner, uh, scanner bed. A flatbed, if you haven't used one, is an optical scanner. The scanning head moves across the stationary page, so it travels the length of the bed. Most of them, the bed is 8.5 by 11 inches in size. That's what this one is, although there are much larger ones as well. And the information is ca captured on a CCD array. CCD is charged coupled device similar to the array in your digital camera. And then it's saved as an image file in a computer. I discovered this method as a matter of necessity when I was working on a collage project in about 1998. At that point, I'd been making photo collages using Photoshop software but I was working from images that I had on film or prints. And I had this collage almost done. I needed one more piece to finish it up, but I didn't have a photograph of that object I needed. As I recall, it was a pencil. Um, what I would have had to do at that point, I didn't have a digital camera, would be go into my studio, set up my lights, photograph on film the pencil, take the film to the lab, have it processed, have the lab make me a scan, pick it up the next day, come back, and finish up the project. And time was tight. I wanted to get it done, so I saw my scanner sitting beside me. I looked at the pencil. It was small, and I thought to myself, well, this is not what I'm supposed to do with a scanner, but I think I'm going to try it. I'll just leave the lid up. So I scanned the pencil. Moments later, I had what I needed to finish my project. When I took time to look a little more closely afterwards, I realized, boy, there is a lot of detail recorded in that scan. It's not what I expected. A light bulb went off for me, and I was really captivated, and I thought this could become a new method, a new tool for me, certainly worth more exploration. When I started working with the flatbed scanner, there was no commonly used term to describe what I was doing. Since then, the term scanography has emerged as a name for this new method of photographic image capture, and it's got to be real because it's even got a Wikipedia entry. 
So I'd like to start by showing you my setup for making the scans. This is part of my, my work area in my studio. My computer, my printers, and over there, my scanner. There's my scanner with the lid up, ready to go. And here, I've folded a piece of paper and I've centered it on the scanner bed. And this shows my scanner uh, software window on my monitor. This is where I can make all the settings for the scan. This is the preview window where I can see, before I make the scan, what the object's going to look like. Now, if you notice, let me go back. When I'm looking down on my object, it looks very different than what I see in that preview in the scanner software. That's because the scanner is recording from the bottom up. So I need to visualize what I'm doing in reverse. And sometimes I will hold objects in my hand and position them and then flip them over. Um, but this thinking in reverse is similar to how a printmaker creates an image on a plate in reverse with a vision of how it's going to be realized when it is finally printed on the press. So back to my object on the scanner bed. I trigger the scanner from my computer. And the light passes the length of the bed. Creates the scan. And there it is on my monitor. Most of the time for the work I'm doing now, I prefer just having a black background. And you probably noticed in the illustrations of the scanner that the light around the scanner was fairly dark. And I keep the light level in my studio low, so just by default, the background goes dark. Sometimes there are cases, though, where I might want a little to more tonality in the background. And so I could do a situation like this. And it'll be the same object. And I've set up my scanner. And I have a white piece of mat board here blocked up with a couple of chunks of wood. I never want to put anything down on the object. And then there's the preview window again for my scan. And you'll notice the background is lighter, but it's not white, even though it was white mat board. And that's because the mat board is much further away than the object, and the light falls off, so it records with a medium tone. And I'll get the most illumination on the areas that are sitting right on the surface of the scanner bed. So this is something when I'm trying to plan things out, if I have certain areas I want to emphasize, I position them accordingly. So I went full steam ahead in this new process, the scanning, and I was really excited about it. I was showing it to people, and the inevitable question arose. <laughs> what is it? You don't use a camera. It's not a photograph. And I realized at that point, I really didn't have a ready answer for it. What do you all think? <laughs> photograph, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Because I think the first thing we need to do, if we need to categorize the work we're doing, um, is look at the definition of photograph. And it really means writing with light. There is no mention of camera in that definition. <laughs> but just to feel more secure, I talked with colleagues and I refreshed myself on the history of photography. And these are cameraless images I'm making. And that way of recording really is as old as the photographic medium itself. beginning with William Henry Fox Talbot's photogenic drawings of plants from about the 1830s. Anna Atkins, also plant studies of mosses and algae. Fox Talbot and Atkins both worked with a process that we now call a photogram, where the object is laid on the photosensitive paper and light exposes it, and the object itself makes the image. Um, and there's no intermediary use of a camera and lens. 
And for those of us who learn photography in a wet, dark room, I suspect that photo making a photogram was our first taste of the magic of printing. I know it was for me. Maholi Naj and Man Ray also made photograms in a more modernist sensibility in the early 20th century. Man Ray even called his rayographs. I was going to do chemographs, but I decided not to. Lottie Jacoby made these images. She was mainly known as a portrait photographer, but she experimented with cameraless imagery. And she waved torches and candles over her photographic paper to make these patterns and then process them. And I thought when I saw them at first that they were paper. But <laughs> Photographers continue to work in this genre. It's outside the mainstream of photography, but to the present day, lots of people are working this way. I think these are very interesting, made by Michael Floman and their photograms. And he exposes sheets of sensitized paper. He works at night um, to natural phenomena over a period of hours. So he records traces of snow, moisture, these uh, firefly luminescence even. So cameraless imagery has really always been a part of photography. So why would I use a scanner? What attracts me to a cumbersome piece of equipment requires electricity when we have these portable cameras. We can take them everywhere. 